Hello, and welcome to the Organic Chemistry Labs. Our topic for today is safety. The purpose of this film is to teach some organic laboratory safety practices and to illustrate why these practices are important. We will also show you what to do if an accident or chemical spill does occur. Of particular importance in the organic chemistry labs are eye protection and proper apparel, eye washes and showers, good glassware handling practices, proper handling of thermometers, not having food or drink in the labs, waste chemical disposal, fire hazards. Colorado state law requires eye protection be worn by everyone in a lab whenever anybody in the room is performing an experiment. The eye protection required is goggles. Our teaching assistant today is Randy, and he is wearing an acceptable style of goggles. Melinda is a student in organic chemistry, and she is also wearing an acceptable style of goggles. Uh, Dave, that's not a proper uh, dress for lab. What's wrong with this? Well, first off, sandals are not going to protect your feet from chemical spills or broken glassware on the ground, and you should wear long pants to protect your legs from any chemical spills from the bench. Mm -hmm. Also, um, do you have a pair of Playtex gloves with you today? No, I don't. Okay, you ought to bring in a pair of gloves so that your hands are protected from chemicals on the bench. Also, uh, run down to the stock room and get yourself a lab coat, and make sure you wear your, pair your goggles when you come back into lab, okay? I don't have any goggles with me. Okay. Borrow this pair for now and get a pair later. Thanks. Many times students feel that they only have to wear goggles if they're performing an experiment themselves. But this is not true. Even if you are not performing an experiment, but someone else in the lab is, you must have your goggles on. It's a good thing that these students had their goggles on. Note the location of the handheld safety wash in your lab. There are no safety showers in the labs or in the hallways. If necessary, the student would remove clothing to wash his or her skin better. This is no time for modesty. Now our students will demonstrate the proper use of eye washes. What do you think it is? What did you get in your I don't know. It might be hydrochloric acid. Dr. Smith! Dr. Smith! You've got to wash it for 15 minutes. Keep your eyes open. What did he get in his eye? Do you know? I don't know. I think maybe some HCL. I'm not sure. Okay, Dave, keep your eyes under there. Keep them open. Do that for about 15 minutes and then go over to Wardenburg. I'm going to talk to the lab coordinator about this and I'll be right over okay. after you, okay? Be sure to rotate your eyes. Okay. Ah. We strongly recommend that students do not wear contact lenses in the lab for two reasons. For one, they interfere with proper washing of the eyes in the case of chemicals splashed in the eye. Secondly, soft lenses can absorb chemical vapors from the air in the labs, causing irritation or become damaged or even fused to the eye. The proper handling of glassware is critical to the prevention of both chemical spills and glassware breakage. Whenever possible, clamp down your glassware to hold it in place and prevent it from breaking. Note how the student clamps the flask securely to the ring stand before attaching the vacuum tubing. Note how sturdy Melinda's glassware setup is. Ah! Oh, Dave, better wash your hands off. Dr. Smith? Uh, Dave, what have you done now? Uh, I spilled something. Okay, uh, wash your hands for about 15 minutes then, and um, I'll go talk to the lab coordinator and fill out an accident report form with Wardenburg. Do you know what you spilled on yourself? Nah, I'm not. Okay, well, you're doing the uh, aldol condensation, so it's probably sodium hydroxide, ethanol, and water. I'll get a spill pill and clean that up. And Dave, next time wear your gloves. Okay. Randy is now demonstrating one method for dealing with a chemical spill. If the spill had been a toxic, volatile, or flammable substance, or if the spill had been very large, he would have required the class to evacuate the lab immediately and pulled the alarm to announce that the building should be evacuated. 
The alarm is located in the hallway outside the organic labs. In the past, accidents and chemical spills have occurred due to improper clamping of glassware for a distillation, a procedure with which you will become all too familiar. Melinda is setting up a distillation apparatus properly. Working in her hood to prevent solvent from escaping into the room during the distillation, Melinda first clamps the round bottom flask securely to the ring stand. Then she places a ring and a heating mantle under the flask. She attaches a Y adapter to the top of the flask. She then secures the condenser with a clamp to a ring stand and with a plastic clip to the Y adapter. Finally, she connects the vacuum adapter to the condenser with a plastic clip. Dr. Smith. Uh, what have you done now, Dave? Ah, I cut myself. I don't know. Okay, that's good, Melinda. Apply direct pressure and you can raise his hand up a little bit and that'll help. Dave, where the heck are your gloves? I, I just lose them all the time. I okay, let's, let's go see the, the lab coordinator about this. Melinda, could you give him a hand cleaning up and make sure you put the glass in the glass waste container over there? Okay? Sure. Thank you. Dave, what are you doing? Come on. Somebody's going to get cut on that, just as you were. Now, look, there's a glass container over there. You put the broken glassware in the glass container, not in okay. the sink, okay? Put your gloves on first before you go doing that. <laughs> okay. Broken thermometers are a particular hazard in the lab. As well as the usual hazards of broken glass, they pose the dangers of mercury exposure. The tips of thermometers are particularly fragile. Always handle thermometers with particular care and never use a thermometer as a stirring rod. If you break a thermometer, immediately inform uh, your teaching assistant. Okay, hold on a minute, Dave. Let me get you a mercury sponge. Okay. I want you to use this sponge to clean up the mercury all over here. Use the gritty side after you've wet it down to sop it up the mercury. How did you break this thermometer anyway? Stirring my mixture. You should never, ever stir a mixture with a thermometer. You should use a glass stir rod. They're in your drawer, okay? Don't let me catch you doing that again. Okay. The chemistry laboratory is not the place for radios, Walkman, food, or drink. Dave has done it again. Never bring food or drink into the lab. At the end of your experiment, you must place waste chemicals in the proper waste containers. Pay close attention to the labels on the waste containers. Your lab manual states where to place waste, and there is a reason for this. If you put a waste chemical in the wrong container, it can react and cause an explosion. If you put a waste chemical in the wrong container, it can react and cause an explosion. Where's this guy? Dr. Smith, we've got a problem here. Fires in the organic lab can be a real danger. Unlike the general chemistry laboratory, the organic lab contains many chemicals that you will use which are flammable. Of course, smoking is not allowed in the labs. Much of the fire danger has been eliminated by the choice of heat source in the experiments. 
The open flames of Bunsen burners are rarely used anymore in the organic labs. Instead, we use steam baths, which are attached to the laboratory steam lines, and electrically heated mantles, as Randy is demonstrating. Since steam baths here only reach temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius, we use heating mantles to achieve higher temperatures and boil solvents that require a higher temperature. Heating mantles are connected directly to Variax, which is this device here. The Variac is a variable transformer and is controlled through this knob here. Whatever you do, do not connect the heating mantle directly into the wall. That will cause it to short out and catch fire. Also, make sure that you have the Variac set on zero when you, before you turn it on. If you do not do this, you may be surprised when the heating mantle heats up very rapidly. Although heating mantles do not require an open flame like a Bunsen burner does, they can still cause solvent fires if hot solvent splashes onto them. In case of a solvent fire, you need to know what to do. There are two types of fire extinguishers located in the front and the back of this lab. The first one is a CO2 fire extinguisher used to extinguish dry and chemical fires. CO2 fire extinguisher has a large cone for a nozzle. To use this fire extinguisher, you pull the clip, aim the nozzle at the base of the fire, and then pull the trigger. The second type of fire extinguisher is a dry chemical extinguisher. These extinguishers are filled with a dry chemical and can be used to extinguish uh, chemical fires and dry fires as well as electrical fires. We're not going to use this extinguisher because it's filled with a dry chemical that makes a mess when we uh, pull the trigger. However, these extinguishers should only be used if you cannot find the CO2 extinguisher. You can tell the difference by noting the two different type of nozzles. Somebody, get a fire extinguisher. Sound the alarm. Oh, never mind. I got it out. Hello? Use of a fire extinguisher can knock everything over and spread the flames. In the case of any fire, even if someone is trying to put it out, everyone must exit the lab and building immediately. Someone must activate the alarm in the hallway to evacuate the building. The fire department should be called at 911. If the fire is put out by the student, the fire department can always be called back to cancel. Everyone, listen up, please. I want you to leave the building right now. We've got an out-of-control fire next door. So file out single file and follow the exit signs. Don't panic, OK? You must keep your personal belongings off the floor. In the case of a fire alarm, you must exit the lab and the building immediately. Don't wait to finish your experiment, though you can quickly switch off your heating mantle or Bunsen burner. I hope you enjoyed our presentation and have learned enough about laboratory safety to have a safe year in organic chemistry. Thanks to our student actors. <laughs>